Greetings to you from Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Plainview, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Phil Augustine, bringing you this service of the Word and prayer for the third Sunday in Advent. Uh, we're here on December 13th of 2020. Uh, we thank and praise God for the musical talents of, of Kim Zabel here again with us today and, and Barb Lutringer on the piano and uh, a lovely uh, prelude of the angel Gabriel from heaven came. A wonderful Advent hymn that reminds us of the, the coming of our Savior. And our, on our Advent wreath today, we, we have lit the, the, the third candle, the pink candle, uh, which reminds us to rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. And so we have a turning point in our season here as we uh, think not only of the Lord's second coming, but probably more so of His first coming uh, with the more of John the Baptist here for us today, along with more prophecy of he who comes uh, in the name of the Lord uh, in order to set us free, uh, to bind up our broken hearts, uh, and to bring us everlasting joy. So with that, we hear our opening hymn, Hark a Thrilling Voice is Sounding. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We hear some selected verses of Psalm 85 for our introit for this third Sunday of Advent. 
Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. We pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this third Sunday of Advent is from the 61st chapter of the prophet Isaiah. This is also uh, the basis of the sermon for today. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them, their offspring shall be known among the nations and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the, Lord, as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden cause what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Uh, bears the strong uh, rejoice theme for our day. St. Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel today, according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, 
that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. This is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing, if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith now by the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join in our next hymn, Hark the Glad Sound. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. On this third Sunday of Advent, we will be reminded and encouraged to rejoice always. We hear again these words from Isaiah 61, verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. Rejoice. That is the theme for this third Sunday of Advent, symbolized by the pink candle now lit and glowing brightly in our Advent wreath. 
But where do you find joy? There can be lots of happiness this time of year and Christmas decorations and lights and activities and music and gifts and food and family, such as it is this year, that perhaps those celebrations are scaled down. But I pray that you still find some joy in getting together. Yet that joy often fades after the lights are taken down in the new year and stored again as the cheer of the season gives way to the winter blahs. But there's a deeper joy that we are to find in Advent, in the events that we celebrate in the birth of our Savior, for Christ alone gives us true joy. Because joy, if we think of it as an emotion or just a state of mind, comes and goes. While one person really gets into the spirit of the season, another is, well, broken by it. May have no joy at all because they're depressed, lonely, broke, just don't know where to turn to find joy. 600 years before Jesus was born, God's people living in the land of Judah lost their joy. They were humbled by God as they were exiled to Babylon. Their homes were destroyed. The temple, Solomon's glorious temple, was destroyed, leveled by the Babylonians. Family and friends lost their lives. It wasn't a surprise, or at least it shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have happened at all. But it's what had to happen as God had told his people over and over again. God is long-suffering. He is patient with us, not wishing that any should perish, but all should reach repentance. But at some point, he has to put an end to evil, an end to rebellion. And God had told his people that this would happen because they had refused to repent of their worship of false gods and forsaking true worship, the true God, in the holy temple. They had grown spiritually complacent. It was their own fault that such destruction had to take place. And so it is in our own lives here and now. God's commands to be holy and faithful are not optional just because we're on this side of Jesus' birth and death and resurrection, the troubles that happen in our lives are still the result of bad choices we've made. And perhaps it is also the Lord's correction, either actively or He's allowing things to happen, in order to remind us that we aren't in control, that we must rely on and follow and worship Him alone. Perhaps we're able to get away with it, and the devil loves this. He loves to have us think that we can just kind of get by on our our own good, good behavior. But perhaps it catches up with us once in a while. The authorities catch us, and we must endure the punishment, do the crime zip along the the roadways a little too fast and perhaps find yourself ticketed and fined. On the spiritual end of things, skip being in God's house and God's Word, and pretty soon you've been lulled into believing in a God that isn't the one true God. And there is no lasting joy, no true joy, in any God that takes the place of the Almighty God, the true God, who reigns over all things, yet doesn't leave himself up high and mighty on the throne, but rather comes to us, abides with us in miraculous, mysterious ways to make himself known. So when the Holy Spirit turns our wayward hearts back to God, 
that's when we know true joy. It's where we know we are restored and forgiven. God's people have been given these words of Isaiah about a hundred years before their exile to Babylon. They certainly probably didn't understand the full depth of what Isaiah was telling them at that point. But they were certainly going to take great comfort in them. Words that they had inscribed on scrolls and and brought with them. Words that provided great comfort when their hearts were turned back to God in repentance and faith while they were in those 70 years of exile. For God had promised them joy again. His word would be there for them to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of vengeance of our God, and to comfort all who mourn. This was the promise of deliverance. For God's people then, deliverance from Babylon, that the days would come to an end of their bondage due to their sin of idolatry and spiritual complacency. Not only does the Lord promise deliverance, but also restoration. For the Lord spoke to them through Isaiah, they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generations. God would return them to their land and there would be restoration, not only the people, but also of property in the temple in Jerusalem. They would again be God's people in God's place. These words would come to their complete fulfillment, again, hundreds of years later, when Jesus would walk this earth. When in a a synagogue he would have the scroll of Isaiah unrolled and read the words that we heard today aloud and proclaim to the people there that day, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And the people marveled at this and wondered who this Jesus of Nazareth, who he could be. But it would take more years, and ultimately the cross and the empty tomb to reveal the true joy of Jesus, who has come to deliver them and deliver us from our captivity to sin, to restore us to the joy of our salvation. For in the death of Jesus is our total deliverance from sin, our freedom from the depths of hell and our restoration with our Heavenly Father. Christ really does true, bring true joy at Christmas and all year long. This joy comes when you hear the Word of God, when you hear the promise of the forgiveness of your sins and the absolution that sets you free from your sadness, that binds you up from your brokenness, turns your captivity to freedom, the freedom we have to live as God wants us to live. God's favor is absolutely assured. His joy, God's joy, is to proclaim His everlasting covenant to you, a covenant He fulfilled in the offspring of His people that would be made known to all the nations, the offspring that is Christ Jesus. And now this is a promise, a covenant that is fulfilled even today in your hearing and your believing of God's Word that continues to be preached to all the nations. And as we grow in God's grace and favor by the power of His Holy Spirit, We receive more and more joy, and it shapes our lives, our conversations. It helps us to be a source of joy to others, not only this time of year, but any time of the year. 
God enables your whole life to be like a great wedding feast of joy. The joy of man and woman coming together as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, Isaiah writes. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, so God has clothed you with the garments of salvation. He's covered you and me in the robes of righteousness. Your baptism is that everlasting covenant that God has made with you. There he united himself to you. Yes, even the sinner that you are. And clothed you, covered you with his righteousness. He has made you his bride and will never leave you or forsake you. Even if you have wandered away from your beloved groom. Even if you have wandered from the true God into worthless idols, God forgives you and always takes you back. Jesus is the source of true joy. The news of his birth brought joy to the angels in heaven that brought forward and announced that joy to the shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night. And now you also can rejoice that the Lord has come and will come again. You can rejoice in the Lord always, and your soul shall exalt in your God. For he has forgiven you all your sins for the sake of the one born in a manger who died on the cross and who rose from the dead, triumphant for you, for your joy, and for everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Continue to the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Keep your saints from every folly that would turn them from your words of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you sent John the Baptist to proclaim the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Richly and daily forgive our sins and the sins of all believers. Bless the work of, our, of the church. Bless our synod president and, and all the leaders of your church. Bless all missionaries, chaplains, and pastors as they proclaim Christ. Gather and preserve your holy Christian church by your voice and send us faithful preachers who will, who, who will not deny but confess your saving truth. Preserve them from despair and burnout, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, be the source of strength and comfort in every home. Bless the children of our families that every darkness would be lightened by your Son's gracious visitation. Sanctify them completely, that their whole spirit, soul, and body may be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give wisdom and success to our nation and its leaders. Behold in mercy all who are in authority over us and those newly elected officials. Preserve our land and its citizens in peace and harmony and protect all who serve in harm's way especially our military servicemen and women, all fighter fighters and police, EMTs, nurses and doctors on the front lines of emergency care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, behold in mercy all who are in any danger, trouble, sickness, or need. Abide and strengthen all medical workers amid the stress of caring for so many in need these days. Hear our prayers for the sick and the suffering, for those whose lives are near the end. Give health to our world and bring this pandemic to an end. Comfort all who mourn and sustain them with a confident hope in the resurrection on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you are the author and giver of life. We pray for your blessings upon those celebrating birthdays this week. 
By your grace, give them faith to trust in you for all their needs of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go now with our Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. That concludes our video service for the week. Rejoice in the Lord always. Go in peace now and serve the Lord.